Hey everyone, thanks for joining me today. Um, if you haven't already, please check the description box below. It'll have a list of my social media sites where you can see what I'm painting on a daily basis, as well as a link to my Fine Art America page where you can purchase prints. So for today's video, I just wanted to show you how I mix my grays when I'm doing a grayscale painting using oil paints. And I also wanted to go over a few of the basic supplies that I use and a few that I of the supplies that I don't recommend. So let's start off with some of the supplies that you're going to need for oil painting. First things first, you're going to need paint. I use um, a lot of the Gamblin paints, but I also have a variety of different ones that I have from years previous that I just use and replace with Gamblin. Uh, the I use odorless mineral spirits and what I like to do is put it into a little jar like this and all the sediment sets to the bottom so that up here is nice and clean uh, to use when you're wanting to clean your brushes or switching from color to color. I also mix in a medium and I use the Galkide Medium by Gamblin. And I like this one, you can get it at Hobby Lobby. It's fairly inexpensive, especially if they have a sale going on but I put it into a little jar like this and this is just kind of dried that's in there right now and I just keep applying more each time I use it. But what it does is it helps uh, thin down the consistency as well as uh, enhances the dry time so you don't have to wait quite as long. So the other thing that I recommend getting is a palette knife and I like this um, style where it's kind of pointed right here and it's not too long. They do have ones that are really long, but the, the main thing that I use a palette knife for is pre-mixing my paints onto my palette before I begin the painting. And this comes in really handy because you can, you're able to pick up a small amount and you have a lot of control with it. Uh, the other thing that you're going to need is some paper towels. Now you can use um, regular paper towels. I don't you know, the cheaper version of paper towels, I don't recommend those. I like the Viva brand paper towels. And what I do is I keep it in the roll like this. And so when I clean my brushes, I can just wipe it onto the roll and it's, it's nice and uh, sturdy for me to use. Um, the other option of paper towels that you can use would be these shop towels. And these are really good for oil paints because it does soak up a lot of the oil and there's, they're pretty lint free, so you're not gonna have any issues with um, any lint rubbing off on your brushes when you're cleaning them, or on your canvas if you have to wipe down your canvas with them. And let's see. So the other thing, let's talk about brushes. And a few of the brushes that I recommend would be these ones here. So you can see, I like the fine touch brushes. Now there's, there's different colored candles and different, different types of bristles. These are the ones that I recommend. I like the orange ones and I buy them in a pack. So they're fairly inexpensive, especially if they're on a 50% off sale. I usually get them at uh, Hobby Lobby and try to get them when they're on sale and I just buy a ton of brushes. But these are the colors that I like. I like the black handled ones, the brown ones, the silver ones, and the orange ones. They do have other ones that are cheaper, and these are the ones that I don't recommend. I have bought these, I bought these once because they were cheaper and they looked fairly soft, and I thought, oh, they would be great for blending brushes. However, they shed so bad that it, it makes a mess and it's it's so frustrating to try to clean all those little hairs off of a piece so i don't use these at all these are more of the yellow handled ones um i don't recommend them they're very soft so they're just they just don't work even for acrylic paint i wouldn't recommend them because of how much they shed it doesn't matter what size brush you're using they shed so bad so these are going to go in the trash just because i don't have a use for them at all the other thing that I don't recommend as far as paint, so I have this Master's Touch oil paint that I had got a long time ago and I'm trying to use it all up. So that's what I'm using today. 
but I don't recommend this brand of paint. And the reason being is it's almost a chalky feel to it. And when you go to apply multiple layers with this white paint, it, it just wants to kind of leave little, almost bubbles in the canvas. I, I, I despise this white paint, but I'm frugal and I'm trying to use up what I have. It's almost gone and I will be ordering the Gamblin um, titanium white from now on. But it's a very dry paint and it's, it's not one that I recommend. So if you're going to buy paint and don't want the frustration that this paint causes, do not get the, the titanium white master's touch oil color. It's not good. So the other question that I get a lot is what blending brushes do you recommend? And I don't recommend any artist blending brushes. I recommend using makeup brushes. So I like the Eco Tools makeup brushes. These ones are nice and small and they don't shed. And that is huge for me. I don't want to have to deal with trying to pick out hairs all the time. So I recommend these. I like this one especially because it's angled and I can get into really small areas with this. And then this one's kind of a larger one and then you've got, you know, a really small detailed one. To clean these, when you after you blend them, I just wipe them on a paper towel. And sometimes if they get a little bit too gunked up, I'll just dip just a little bit of this area here. You don't want to get it back into this area. I'll just dip a little bit into my OMS and wipe it off on the paper towel and it's good to go. The other one for larger area blending, what I recommend is, I like this one. This one's by e.l.f. It's the Total Face Brush. It's nice and soft and you don't get shedding with it like you would with a regular large mop brush. So pick these up. This one was only like $3. So I've got a bunch of these and you don't want to get the OMS down in this area here. It'll kind of deteriorate the glue. You don't want that. So just when you do clean it, just wipe it off on a paper towel really well or you can just um, dip like this section into the OMS and then clean it off. And it dries fairly quickly. So now let's get on to mixing the grays. I wanted to show you how I do the value scales for the grays and I use this same technique to do my um, any of the colors that I use I use the same technique so let me show you that okay so you're gonna want to use a palette knife like I had told you before whatever one that you prefer is the one that I recommend for you this one is the one that I like to use so I always start off with grabbing my titanium white and I grab a decent sized chunk of titanium white now this is gonna be the lightest value besides the pure titanium white. So we're gonna add just a small amount of our black. And we're gonna use such a tiny amount. And this, you're gonna to wanna to mix it thoroughly. So, and it's just gonna be slightly darker than a pure white. So I kind of scoop it up and smush it back down and just make sure everything's kind of blended. Now the color that I'm using for my black, this one is ivory black right here, and then this is Mars black. Ivory black is a warm black and Mars black is a cool black. So we're gonna be using, right now, we're gonna be using the ivory black to create warm grays. So once you get all that mixed, then you're gonna take a chunk of that mixture and pop it to the next value. And we're gonna add more black to that. And keep adding it until you get the value that you want. So you can see the difference here. It's a really slight change and it depends on your reference photo as to how much of a change you need and what values you're going to need. So I just continue doing this process and I move it a little bit over to the right, add more black, deepening the values each time. So then you take 
I still have some of that mixture on my palette knife, so I'm just going to add some to that. Add more black. And you just continue this process until you get all the values that you want. But it helps to start out with a good chunk of your light color so that you have enough mixture to kind of keep you going throughout the whole thing. If not, you can just keep grabbing your white and your black and mixing it. So we have four different values here and you can, you, I mean, you can make as many values as you want. I usually maybe do about six to eight values. And so we'll do, we'll make six values. Just so I can show you. Take some of that, add even more black. So now you've got six different values. You can, now I start out with maybe six to eight values, but what I, when I go through the painting, I kind of mix my um, intermediate values. So sometimes I'll mix these two together to get kind of a different transition color all together. And then at some points in the painting, I use the pure black and the pure white. And so that gives me two other values. So just look at your reference photo and decide what kind of values you want. But the main thing that I, I do is I make sure I take from the pile before and add it to the next pile. And you can see I did that with the colors up here. I took from this pile to add a little bit more of the yellow. This one I add a little bit more of the red in the yellow, more of the red, and definitely more of the red and magenta to this pile here. And so I just keep taking from each pile and it creates a harmony in the painting. Now the other thing I wanted to show you is the difference between the warm and the cool grays. When you're doing a grayscale painting, you can do it all in warm grays, but I like to add in a little bit of the warm and the cool, and that just creates another dimension. So we'll do the Mars black so you can see kind of the difference. Now I'm gonna take a chunk of my white, nice size chunk, grab just a tiny bit of the Mars black, I added too much black there, so I'm gonna add more white. Mars black is a pretty powerful black. It's very deep. It's great for really, really dark areas. So I'm gonna take a chunk of this, start it with the next pile. And I'm going to take my white and add it to this pile just to lighten the value a little bit. Okay, so there is one of our lighter values. Now we're going to take the Mars black and add it to this one, this pile here. And I won't do as many um, as many values. I just want to give you the general idea so you can kind of see a difference between the warm and the cool grays. So this one is closer in value to this here. So if I put this next to that, you can kind of see how much bluer this one is than this one. So let's take that even darker. So if I add that to this area here, you can see 
the difference of how blue it is compared to how brown this one is and how, you know, how much warmer this one is and how much cooler this one is. And then our darkest tone. This value is a little bit darker than this one, but you can kind of see how much bluer, the, how much cooler and bluer this one is than this one here. So it's good to have this kind of mixtures. You could use the um, the warmer grays for your highlight highlighted areas, and then the cooler grays for more of your shadow areas, and that just gives your painting a little bit of dimension. So I hope that this helped um, helped you kind of uh, show you how I mix my my paints when I'm using oil paints and kind of show you the difference between the warm and the cool grays. The only time I pre-mix oil paints or the only time I pre-mix paints is when I'm using oil paints. When you use acrylic paints, you can pre-mix them, but you're going to struggle with dry time. So your piles are going to end up dry. They just dry too quick to be able to do piles. I'm sure that there's some artists out there that that works really well for them, especially if they're using large paint, large amounts of paint, then you're, it's going to dry a lot slower than if you're using thinner amounts of paint. But I only use the pre-mixing method when I'm using oil paints and I find it really helpful. It makes it go a lot quicker, especially um, when you start getting into the painting you already have piles mixed and then you can mix, you know, this color with this color and create a whole new color. Um, same thing, you can create, you can mix this color with this color to create a new color. So I hope that that helps you. If you guys have any questions, put them in the description box below. I just wanted to make this quick video to kind of go over what, how, what works for me. So this may not work for you, but this is what works for me. And uh, next week we'll be doing a grayscale painting another oil painting. I'm really loving the grayscale. And so here's, I have the base laid already, but this is what we'll be doing for next week. And if you guys have any questions, put them in the description box below and check out my Fine Art America shop. And yeah, that's about it. And if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe and I will see you guys all next week.